because now is the time you're actually here, which is to see the incredible Jamie Cox talk to us about her nows. OK, cool. Uh, I'm usually on a microphone. So if you can't hear me, just like wave your hands and I'll start yelling. Um, I'm Jamie. Nice to meet everyone. Good morning. I'm not a morning person. Uh, I did have a cup of coffee this morning. I know. I, I know there's some of you out there, so we're gonna we're gonna get through this. We're, yeah, solidarity. <laughs> so um, I'm a brand strategist and designer here in Nashville. Um, I'm also the founder of a company called Strange Salt, which is a creative collective um, that brings creatives together to work on brands that we like. Um, I'm a spin instructor. I do a lot of things, but I am here today to talk about how I am a serial hobbyist and like how that's okay for me and how I've gotten to a point where that feels okay. Um, so there's some irony of me talking about now because my job as a brand strategist is to live in the future. So I'm not going to talk a ton about the work I do, but um, my like when it really boils down to it, I work with business owners to kind of plan for where they want to go. So a lot of my time is spent in the future. I have never been great at um, looking back or being present in the moment. That's just like my toxic trait. And you know, I'm, I'm dealing with it. Um, but, uh, but in order to kind of talk about right now, we need to go back a little bit and talk about the past. So I'm going to try really hard to focus on now and being here with all of you lovely people. Um, and talking about the past. So let's rewind. Um, so I grew up in a really, really small town. Um, it's in Indiana. It is, you've never heard of it, don't even ask. Um, <laughs> but it's uh, close enough to Kentucky and Ohio where there were other things happening. Um, and I'm sure there are some of you that grew up in small towns. So I just, I would just like to see who is out there. So like, who grew up in a small town? Okay, keep your hands up. Okay. Who had, if you had a Walmart in your town, put your hand down. Okay. If you graduated with more than 100 people, put your hand down. Okay. If you um, had more than one high school in your county, put your hand down. Okay. Oh. We can, we can go all day. Okay. Oh. <laughs> okay. So. Okay, I mean, I'm like nine out of 10 times, guys, I can win that game. So uh, like I said, it's small. Um, literally one stoplight in the county. It was small. Um, so I uh, grew up with a very normal family. They're very lovely. Um, I have, um, I'm the youngest of three daughters. Um, and they're all like super, my whole family's like really talented at what they do and also like they do really hard, important things. And like one's uh, has a PhD in biology and is a medical writer. The other one's a physical therapist and like a professor training other future physical therapists. And you'll see me and my lovely husband here on the end, like we're also great at what we do, but we're just living very different professional lives from the rest of my family. Um, so anyway, my lovely family, um, yeah. They're great. Love them very much. I almost sent them a link to tune in, but I was like, I don't know if I'm going to say something embarrassing about you guys, so I won't. Um, <laughs> but OK, so growing up in the middle of nowhere with two older sisters, I had like a lot of room, literally and figuratively, to explore. I was into a lot of different things as a kid. Um, me and my sister we had like a whole phase where we were into inflatable chairs and we would go to, there was a Sam Goody like 40 minutes away. We would ask my mom to drive us to Sam Goody. We would buy inflatable chairs. Every, this is like the most 90s story ever. Um, <laughs> and we would, we shared a room at the time and we would just like, I don't even know, like we would wrestle with them. We would push each other down the stairs and like just to see what would happen. We'd put them on the trampoline and like, we, again, into some really interesting stuff. Um, <laughs> there's also like really normal things I was into. I was big into sports. That was what happened when you lived in the middle of nowhere in Indiana. Like everyone was like, oh, you've seen Hoosiers, right? Yes. Yes, I've seen Hoosiers. Um, <laughs> everybody was into sports. So, you know, normal things like that. But I was also super into cross stitching for like three days until I decided I was going to turn my childhood bedroom into a museum of only my cross-stitching work. <laughs> and then 
I proceeded to never finish a single piece of cross stitch because I was like, yeah, I'm just focused on this museum thing now. Um, I uh, also was like an emo kid. I still am. I don't even want to talk about it. Um, <laughs> but with that came, I was into MySpace and like MySpace photography, which again, to a lot of you probably doesn't sound weird, but when you grew up in a place that had very little internet and when you did have internet, it was dial up and it took like 40 minutes to load one MySpace page. It was a commitment. Um, so yeah, I was into a lot of things. I was also in FFA, which people are surprised to hear about, um, like seeing me now and hearing I was an emo kid, like they're like, really? Um, so I was the president of our, our FFA chapter. I was a 10 year 4-H member, which allowed me to explore a lot of different things. I was just into a lot of stuff and yes, if you caught it, I was a polka dancer. Um, I grew up, where I grew up was founded by Swiss immigrants. There was a Swiss wine festival that you can still go to this day, to, to this day for like all of you who are like, I've got to go to VV Indiana, you can. Um, but you didn't get out of there without doing a Swiss polka dancing stint. So mine was lovely. Um, I went to college. Uh, I went to Indiana University in Bloomington. It was the biggest town I've ever lived in. Um, 80,000 people when school is in session, 40,000 people uh, when school is not in session. It's lovely when school is not in session, um, but it's still like a small town for most people. So again, biggest town I've ever lived in. Um, I had a pretty normal, really studious college career. I love organized activities, like mm. love them. So college was my dream scenario because I was like, man, so many clubs and things I can explore. So many people are allowed to just like have different interests and people were coming from small towns and were able to be like weird for the first time in their life. And it was just a really special place for me. Um, I, uh, I use a party school, if you didn't know. Um, and I obviously love to party. This is me. Uh, <laughs> I, <laughs> I, uh, while, while most people were having very different college experiences, I was like, I am gonna show up to Halloween to a work party dressed as Bill from Schoolhouse Rock. If you don't know what that is, please look it up later. It's very, it's very important in today's, today's society to know what that is. Um, so I was just like super studious. I um, was a teaching assistant for like three classes. I was really focused on graduating early. Um, and I was like, yeah, I'm gonna start clubs and stuff, which I did. Um, so I was just uh, like, I loved school. Um, and I didn't really have a ton of free time. But when I did, I got into some stuff. Um, so this was, I wasn't like a gym rat, but again, that organized activity thing I loved. So I would always go to like student workout things at the rec center just to like be around people. I just love the idea of doing the same thing with like other weird people. Um, I also, this was my first time living on my own with my own kitchen. Um, I grew up on a farm, we raised cattle. I was not a vegetarian then um, for obvious reasons, like it was kind of hard to be. Uh, so uh, when I had a kitchen, I decided I was gonna be vegetarian and I started cooking. Um, I eventually, I just like loved the idea of being able to explore different things and like be able to change if I was a vegetarian or if I was gonna be vegan and like being able to control that. So um, I started a food blog to kind of document that journey. It was called The Hearty Herbivore and um, it was fun, it was like fun. And for the time, influencers were not a thing and I don't wanna brag, but I was like the first food influencer. <laughs> I wasn't, but it was fun. Um, and it was, and I'm like, I had to write up in the paper and like people in Bloomington were like, hey, will you write about this thing that I made or whatever? And I was like, yeah, sure. So anyway, it was just a cool way for me to connect with the community, but also to like embrace this love for food. And that was also when I started to fall in love with just like the act of making things. Um, so after college, I moved to Nashville um, and I just focused on being like very normal in society. I was like, I'm into a lot of stuff and in order to be successful, I really need to like niche down my personality and just like focus on something, Jamie, just focus. Um, so I moved here, I got married to my husband who is my biggest fan, he's in the front row. Um, he tells me that, I'm not just making that up. Um, <laughs> uh, I got a great job. Um, I, at this time, I don't really think I had like career goal. 
I was, I still don't feel like that. Um, and I think that's okay. But I got a cool job working um, for the tourism department in Franklin, Tennessee. So I got to talk about like the importance of taking a vacation and which is like a really low stakes job. <laughs> it was great. Um, it was a fun way though for me to like explore creativity in a professional space. Um, and like I said, like all I knew was like, yeah, I want to be successful at my career, whatever that meant. So I got awards for that work, which like, okay, seems successful, whatever. Um, <laughs> and we adopted our uh, first dog, Georgia. She now has a brother, Snoop, who she hates. Um, she's still around though. She's great. So yeah, uh, moving to Nashville was, again, the biggest city. I'm just growing. Like I'm again in the biggest city that I've ever been in. And I was just like, yeah, time to be an adult. So here's what I was into. Work. That's all I was into. And if I was in to anything else at that time, I was so into this that I don't remember anything else. Um, I spent, I worked in tourism, like I said, and that's a really fun job. So it was really easy for me to fall into that and like make that my personality. Um, if you talked to me during that time, which I think I met a lot of you during that time, that was when I first started coming to Creative Mornings. Um, I, if you ever asked me what I did, I would get really excited and then proceed to talk about it forever. And even if you didn't ask, I would tell you every single thing you should and shouldn't do in the Nashville area, like if you're looking to have a good time. So if you met me during that time, I'm sorry. Sorry, <laughs> sorry to everyone for all the unsolicited advice. Um, so, uh, yeah, I was just in the work. Um, so in 2017-ish, I went to an AIGA talk um, and I don't really remember a lot about it um, because again, <laughs> I was still in the work. Um, but the creative, a creative director from Herman Miller was speaking and the only thing I do remember was he said this and he said it, it was like he was looking into my soul and was like, you're too consumed with work, get a hobby. And I was like, yeah, you were right. You are right. So um, I, like in that moment, I kind of came back to those things that I was into in college, and I remembered how much I loved cooking and baking and exploring um, that space. And like, I also just loved giving, the, especially in college when nobody is eating like home-cooked meals ever. Like they're like, yeah, Easy Mac sounds great, um, ramen. Uh, it was like so fun for me to give people something I made and just see their like faces light up. So I was... I was like, yeah, I need a hobby. And I came back to baking. So um, I really focused on just making weird cookies. That was my thing that I just never saw in the world, like making things with um, different flavors that I never saw in cookies, making things with new ingredients that I never tried. Um, and it was just really fun. I just fell in love with like the experimentation and trying something and even like the failure part of it when it was like, wow, that did not work. Sweet Corey tried a lot of stuff. <laughs> so sorry. Um, but, and I just want to brag on myself, like, these were good cookies, guys. <laughs> they were good. Um, I, my coworkers were very fortunate to have me in their office. Again, not like humble brag, but uh, I would bring them cookies all the time. Um, this was um, what I called the Ruby cookie, and it was a red velvet cookie dipped in bourbon ganache with white chocolate chips, and it was just like the perfect like sweet and a little bit of spicy from the bourbon and I just loved it. So anyway, my very fortunate coworkers who were so well-intentioned, I do not blame them at all. I took them cookies all the time and this is what they told me. You should sell these. And I was like, you know what? I should. <sighs> and guys, if you create something like you've probably heard this, like obviously that's the only thing you can do if you create something is to sell it and make it into more than just a hobby. So I sold cookies and I started making really, really normal cookies. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever made sugar cookies. It takes a lot of time. So much time, guys. <laughs> and the thing about sugar cookies, for me personally, they're just sugar and butter. They're not very good. They're cute, sure. They're not very good though. But if you wanted a sugar cookie, I would make you a sugar cookie. I would make you as many sugar cookies as you wanted because I thought my life's work was gonna be baking cookies. And that was this little hobby that I had, had turned into something that I was gonna focus all of my energy on 
again, Corey probably was like, oh my gosh, just like gripping, like holding on for the ride. Um, but uh, yeah, I did a lot during that time. So I, the logical thing for me was to start a business as the Ruby Cookie, um, and I did. So I formed an LLC. Um, I did my first pop-up at Gift Horse, which Jess is here. If you haven't been there, go. It's amazing. Um, and uh, I baked a lot of cookies. I baked probably 100 cookies-ish a week, whether those were like orders for like parties or weddings or a pop-up or it was just me testing stuff. I baked so much every week in my tiny, tiny, tiny kitchen. So it was a lot and I was in it and I didn't even realize how much work I was doing. Um, and my hobby was no longer a hobby. So fast forward, this is going on for about two years. Um, and on July, July 3rd, 2019, this was like a Thursday and it was like, yeah, 4th of July weekend, we're gonna party. Uh, like this weekend, everybody here is like, yeah, I cannot wait. Um, <laughs> but uh, this was a Thursday and I went out with some friends knowing that I had a cookie pop up that Sunday. So I knew that this whole holiday weekend I was gonna spend time baking. And I was like, yeah, I'm excited about it. It's gonna be a good time. And then uh, when I was out with friends, my mom uh, had let me and my sisters know that my cousin had gone missing on a trip with his family. And that kind of just like, it was really like a pump the brakes moment where it was just like my whole life kind of stopped then. Um, Josh, my cousin was, he was like a brother to us and uh, he was like the only family member that we liked. I mean, I, I'll say it, it's fine. <laughs> um, this is why I didn't share the link with my family, guys. Um, <laughs> but uh, I knew in that moment that I did not want to wake up the next day and bake hundreds and hundreds of cookies. That thing that had brought me so much joy and a break from work was not the thing I wanted to do when my life was becoming so much work. So this was a really hard time for me. Um, I just like was dealing with grief for the first time. The details of him going missing were incredibly confusing and it was just hard. There were a lot of questions that weren't answered. And I was just like, oh, I do not want to do this. I do not want to bake. I just want to lay in bed. So um, I pulled myself out of bed anyway. And I made cookies for the last time in this regard. Um, so I did this pop-up shop. Y'all, that was a weird day. I like, I think I ran through a few red lights. Like I was just not there that day. Um, and it was, it was a hard time. Um, but in that moment when I knew that I didn't want to bake cookies, I knew I had to do something and I didn't know what it was. Um, but I just really tried to get a hobby in that moment when I needed something to escape from the work of life and from the work of work, I knew I needed something. Um, so I started drawing. Um, so I uh, downloaded Procreate and I was just like, I'm gonna draw things that are bringing me happiness right now. Um, and I could barely get off the couch most days, so I watched a lot of television and that was what brought me happiness. So I watched Queer Eye and I watched Schitt's Creek, Ben Chadal, Jane the Virgin. If, if it's a comedy, I have seen it, guys. Uh, if, you need, if you're going through something, TV is great. <laughs> um, so I started drawing things that just made me a little bit happier and I truly got a hobby in that moment. This was just fun. Um, I traded baking, that work that I was doing uh, for drawing the food that I ate. Um, I really wanted, in this time when things were hard, I wanted to remember things that made me happy. So I would start to draw stuff that, um, as like kind of a memory log. So when I ate something I loved or ate something new, I would start to draw it. And drawing had really just become that escape for me when I needed it. So. Um, this presentation is not about Jess, but Jess also <laughs> invited me to spin class. <laughs> um, and I, you have one more shout out coming, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, uh, so she invited me to a spin class during this time. And um, as somebody who had never dealt with the really heavy emotions that I was going through, I really needed a lot of space to process that. And as somebody who um, has a hard time showing emotion in general, I kind of needed a private place to do that. So I went to spin class where there were like a lot of people, but it was so dark that nobody could tell if I was just like sobbing. Honestly, I literally did that just some days. It was just like, that was the place that I needed to cry 
and to work through things like mentally and physically. I had a lot of energy that I didn't know what to do with. And that was how I got it out. So um, it was also the thing for me that took up so much time that I couldn't bake cookies. Like I knew that was still in my head. I still owned the Ruby cookie and people were still asking me like, hey, I have this thing coming up. Will you do cookies? And I was kind of apprehensive to do it. And I would, you know, make up some sort of excuse. Like I'm not, I'm not interested in it right now or I have something else going on and booked, whatever. Um, but really it was this that was taking up time for me to not be able to do the thing that was so much work. Um, so I knew I wanted to stop baking cookies. Uh, this is the last shout out for Jess. <laughs> um, I um, knew that I didn't want that event that I did on the 7th of July to be the last event I did though because I, that's not how I wanted to remember the thing that I had loved so much and that had taken up so much time for me. That wasn't the experience I wanted to end on. So uh, Jess asked me to bake cookies for her wedding and I did that and I knew, and I don't think I told anybody else this, but I knew that that was the last time I was ever going to do any sort of event, like bake hundreds of cookies, let anybody like pay me for, like I was over it and I knew it in my head and I just didn't know, I didn't have the words to tell anybody though. Um, so fast forward to 2020, um, and like we all know what happened. <laughs> Do I even need to go there? So I uh, knew I wanted to stop baking cookies, didn't know how, and then COVID happened and like it was awful. But what better reason for me to stop baking cookies that I like literally couldn't go sell cookies. So I kind of just let the Ruby cookie fade into oblivion and I was like, I don't even, I, there was a lot of emotion wrapped up in it, not because the business wasn't successful or what I needed it to be, but because something I loved so much had become something that I truly just like resented to my core. I was like, oh, I'm so tired of baking cookies. If I never see another cookie in my life, like I'll be fine. Um, so it was just a really hard time for me. And then COVID happened and I was like, oh, I'll just exit here. Um, so I closed everything down on the back end. I did my taxes. I, you know, closed the LLC, all of that. And then I was stuck at home for a long time. Um, and it was just kind of what now? So at this time I had left Visit Franklin to work at another place. And I was again working all the time. And now home was work and work was home. And I didn't know what to do. So I started drawing the places that I loved that had made during that really hard time in my life had made Nashville feel like the community that I needed. And this was just my way of kind of keeping myself busy and also my little thing that I could do to support businesses and tell other people how to support them. So I started drawing these just for fun. Um, I shared them on Instagram, which was the, you know, the death sentence to all hobbies. Um, and started getting uh, requests for me to draw other businesses. And I, I was like, oh yeah, I'll do that. That's fine, I'll, I'll, I'll draw that. Or I've never been there, but I'll draw it, sure. Uh, so, uh, and then I started asking for requests um, and I started drawing those. And then I did not wanna draw ever again. <laughs> and uh, that was when I realized this deadly hobby cycle that I had fallen into. So I had found a hobby, I loved a hobby, and I like obsessed over a hobby. Uh, I would monetize it or I would like let other people tell me how to do that hobby. And then I would be like, man, this is the worst thing I've ever done. Um, <laughs> and I just hated doing it and I would stop doing it and then I would go through the same cycle again and again. It happened, I like looking back, it happened cross-stitching. I thought I was going to make a museum out of my life. Like, what? What was I doing? Um, it happened uh, with the food blog. Uh, I loved it. People started asking me to write about their things or were like, hey, I'll pay you. And I was like, yeah, let's do it. And I just stopped. Cookies, drawing, like it was happening over and over and over again. Um, so there's this saying that we all know, and it's like, eh, uh, like love what you do and you'll never work a day in your life. Oh my God. Well, um, it, but this is the reality though. It's like, love what you do. And I, Christy said, and you'll never have boundaries. And I was like, yeah, that's also true. But you also just begin to resent it and probably forget 
what you liked about it in the first place. So instead, why don't we do a little bit more of this, like just liking what we do and keeping what you love for yourself to fill you up in the way that work will never fill you up. So in quarantine, it was awful, but I got so many hobbies, guys. <laughs> Um, and I promise I'm getting to now, by the way. Like, I know we're kind of all over the place, but I'm getting there. Um, so I got into, like, some, a lot in quarantine. This is, like, maybe half of it. I kept asking Corey, like, what are some other things we did? And we would come up with, I thought of one last night. I can, anyway, all of it. So um, I did get back into baking. Uh, not cookies, though. I got into baking sourdough. Not to brag, I still have my sourdough starter, and I use it weekly. It was not just a fleeting thing for me. I am committed. Uh, I got really into buying fat quarters. I do not sew. I do have a sewing machine. I'm awful at it, truly awful. But I just love buying fabric, so I hoard a lot of fabric. Uh, I kept spinning. I got into Peloton. I don't own a Peloton, but I love all the instructors and watch all their classes. Um, I briefly got into gardening, and then I was like, it's hot. Um, <laughs> I... Uh, uh, I got into WCW and WWE wrestling. Um, I, I remember watching it as a kid, but not really being invested, but Corey was like in it. So he was like, oh, you gotta watch this video. And I was like, let's watch this video and this video. Tell me about this character. And I was like all into every persona that existed in that universe. So that was something else I got into. Um, obviously everybody got into Animal Crossing. Who didn't? Uh, my man. My island is dead now, though. Uh, got into Mad Libs. We uh, took some long drives, like in a time we couldn't see anybody. We drove across the country um, and did Mad Libs the whole way. So that was a fun thing. Um, I got into Austin Powers again, which was my favorite movie as a kid. I don't think I mentioned it earlier. But if you haven't watched Austin Powers since you were a kid, please go home and watch all three movies. Like, like skip work, cancel it. <laughs> watch Austin Powers. Oh, so good. Um, so. Um, I also started a calendar of kind things called Kindlander, um, and it was a fun thing because nobody was telling me what to do. It was like, I want to explore art in a different way. I wanted to explore animation some more, so I got into that. Um, I wanted to, again, kind of put a little kindness into the world when we needed it. Um, we need it every day, but, you know. Uh, so I put it, just put it out in the world. I didn't really care what happened. Um, and then eventually I ended it, not because of the hobby life cycle, but just because I was like, yeah, I'm ready to try something new. And I don't even know that this is like over yet. It's just over for right now. So I, I know it'll always be there. Um, I decided that some hobbies fall somewhere between work and play. Like spinning is physical work. It's also a lot of mental work, but it's what I need. Um, I really wanted to explore this space more but I didn't have um, access to a gym, so I bought a bike. And then I didn't have the classes that I wanted to ride. I, like, I, like I said, I watched some Peloton classes, and I was like, this is great, but I want something different, and I can't find it. So I um, watched a lot of YouTube. I just got into like the indoor cycling world on the internet, and eventually met somebody who taught spin instructors like to be coaches. And I don't want to be a spin instructor. I was like, Nah, that's not for me. But I do want to know how to build classes that I can do because I can't find them anywhere else. Um, so I became a certified spin instructor in July of 2021 without any intention of anything else. So that was a great little fun process for me. Uh, I left my job that I uh, thought I loved. I don't know. I have a lot of emotions about that. I left my job. Um, <laughs> to do stuff that I like and to focus my energy on other things and to pursue what I really wanted to do for work um, and to kind of, oddly enough, separate myself from work in a way. So I'll get a little bit to that. But uh, this is just the day that I quit my job. And it was like, I like to keep this photo because it was just like maybe the happiest I've ever felt. Uh, <laughs> it was just like, oh, so liberating. Um, so now. Now, like I said, I'm doing something I like to make room for what I love to do. Um, so I own two businesses that I like very much. I own Jamie Cox, which is also my name, coincidentally, uh, <laughs> where I do brain consulting. But I also founded a company called Strange Salt. That's a creative collective. Um, and oddly enough, owning two businesses gives 
me like freedom to not think about work that much. It's a really bizarre place for me, but I think it's because I, I trust myself more than I'll ever trust, sorry, any of you. I'm sorry, this is, this is also my toxic trait. Um, so I just know that the work is gonna get done. Like, it's always gonna be there for me, and it's always gonna come my way. Um, so I'm okay in that regard. I'm also, I also think it's a balance of, I like what I do enough, and I care enough about my clients that like I want their business, businesses to succeed, but I'm not so in love with my work that I feel like, enthralled in it and that it's become my personality. So I've just been able to really clearly separate that and it's like, oh, what a relief it is. Um, and you know, it, it ebbs and flows. Like some weeks, I am, this week was one of those weeks where I'm like thinking about work all the time. But next week might not be that and I think some of that just comes with like, that's the territory. So anyway, um, so instead of thinking about work, I think about all my hobbies instead. Um, here are some of them, here are some of them. I also got into Mario Tennis. Uh, if you played that as a kit, like N64 version, it's also available on the Switch. Shameless plug for Mario, I guess. Um, <laughs> it's really fun though. Um, but spin has started to be that exception to my hobby rule. So um, I am now a spin instructor. I had no intention of doing that. And then I just was like, well, let's see what happens. Let's enjoy this process. Let's enjoy now and not be worried about where it's going. Like, if this isn't there for me tomorrow, I will still be interested in spinning for myself. So, but the other thing about spin is that it's kind of like one big hobby with a bunch of like little tiny hobbies inside of it. Um, so it's really teaching me to love the process, like I said, of now in spin. And when it boils down to it, you when you're indoor cycling, there's nowhere to go. Like you're sitting on a bike, pedaling, going nowhere. So all you can focus on is right now. Like there's not an end goal. The class ends and that's the end goal, I guess. Um, so it's a bunch of like little tiny hobbies wrapped in one. So since I was a kid, I've loved, make, like I burned, I was the person that like, sorry, stole all the music off of LimeWire and burned everybody's CDs. Um, <laughs> I've paid it back now. I feel like maybe we'll see. Um, but I love creating playlists still, and I create a playlist for every single ride that I do. Um, I don't have to. Like, I have a ton of playlists that I could go to. I can teach a class right now based on my Spotify. But um, I just love creating playlists, and that's like the part of it that brings me a lot of joy. I have also made a playlist that Christy made this lovely artwork for um, that is available. Yeah, it, it, you know, you know, we'll, we'll yeah. We'll accept it, we'll accept it. And I love subjecting other people to my music taste, so <laughs> this was great. So anyway, that's like one little thing inside of Spin that I love. Um, I also still love being social in like the most nerdy way. This is that organized activity that I loved so much, like 4-H and workout classes and clubs in college. Like this is the other way that I can do this. If you cannot tell, I love being on a microphone. Um, I was always the like talks too much kid on the report card, you know, that note. Uh, and I, somebody sent me a TikTok and it was somebody saying, yeah, they gave me a microphone and I'm just a lot louder now. And like, yeah, that, that is me. Um, so I love being on a microphone. Um, and like I said, I just love being on a bike going nowhere because there is no end goal. Like I have to, it forces me to be right here, right now, just focusing on that one thing, not focusing on the museum I'm gonna make in my bedroom. When I think about this and what I was into as a kid, I start to kind of draw lines to what I'm into now. So take it in the context of spin. So like me and my sisters played school all the time when we were kids and we loved it. I think they loved it because they got to tell me what to do and I loved it because I was like, ah, organized, yes, here for it. So now I, I get to tell people what to do in spin. Um, I was like into sports, like I said. I was into polka dancing. I had to have some sort of rhythm to do that. Uh, and I get to do that every day on a bike when we ride to the beat of the music. Uh, I was into emo music. And now I like find myself finding uh, like emo remixes for class. Um, burning CDs, Austin Powers has made it back, guys. I put the soundtrack in like 
at least one class a week. So you guys have a lot to look forward to. Um, I also, uh, Mad Libs made a return too because um, I think a lot of my humor comes from that like absurdity and just like that freedom to be weird when I was a kid. Um, and that's something that I kind of bring to my rides too. Like humor is a big part of my ride. I never take anything there too seriously, like you can't. Um, so anyway, just, I like to draw those dots. And it's, and I see this in a lot of places, like cross stitching became knitting, became crocheting, became making pom-poms or, um, yeah, there's just so many of those things that I draw back to my child and I'm like, oh, I've actually always been into this. I just didn't take the time to slow down and realize it. Um, so now, I, like I said, I bake really normal things again. Uh, and by that, I mean I don't. <laughs> I make sourdough bread. I keep my sourdough alive. It's like a child um, that lives in my refrigerator. It's not weird at all. Um, <laughs> so I, I also like bake pies, and I do bake cookies again. And I bake things that I want to bake. Um, my lucky friends get to taste them all. Uh, and I never take requests. Sorry. Uh, I never take money. Sorry, I guess. Um, <laughs> but I have drawn that really clear line, like, no, this is a hobby for me again. Um, and speaking of baking, I cook my way through cookbooks. Um, so I especially love the Dishoom cookbook. This is, um, it's a restaurant in London, but um, it's Indian food. And the joy of cooking out of this is that, yes, the end result is exciting, but it is such a slow, long process that I have to slow down and only focus on what I'm doing in that moment. So like after a long day of work, when I am having those weeks, when I feel like I'm consumed by work, I can cook out of this book and just be there focusing on now, which is making Indian food. I read a lot of books that I want to read. Um, I, if you tell me, oh, you should read, sorry, I'm not going to read it. Um, or if somebody's like, oh, a great workbook, I'm like, nope, goodbye. I am only reading books from now on that I want to read. If you guys are familiar with Monster Factory, <laughs> uh, if you aren't, um, it is a YouTube series. I don't think they make it anymore, but um, we got very into it during quarantine and even before quarantine. Um, it is the McElroy brothers. They make really city silly video game characters and uh, play video games with them. And when I was a kid, I loved watching people play video games. I would wake my sister up like, Two, that was probably the other time I was up this early. When I woke my sister up and forced her to play Banjo-Kazooie for like two hours before we went to school, just so I could watch. So <laughs> I never played, but now I do that by, I, I buy video games now exclusively to make like weird characters and just do stuff with them in the game. We have uh, Dr. Sausage Claw is one of them. They're great. Oh, okay, anyway, <laughs> uh, I also, have learned to play those video games that I forced my sister to play. Uh, I've played a lot of Nintendo lately, and it's just like a good, again, that thing, like, yeah, I'm like working toward a goal, but there's a lot that goes into that. Um, so I just like playing right now. I really love yarn uh, when I'm feeling like it. I make things out of yarn. I make pom-poms. I got into punch needle and was like making, and I was like into kind of rug pillows and all sorts of stuff. So just when, Yarn is available, I like to make something. Uh, I also like to make things that I want to exist in the world and like, honestly, if you don't want them, I don't care. If nobody in the world buys something from me, I don't care. Um, these are just like fun things that I like to make and I wanted to drink out of a coffee cup when I'm on Zoom calls that say I hate it here. <laughs> so I made one. Um, <laughs> so I just like to make things just to make them. And I try to create just to create. So I try not to get hung up on that end goal. Instead, I focus on right now and that moment, that action of creating. And I like to put this this way. It, are there any like illustrators in the room? Okay. So I like to pose this question. When was the last time you opened like Procreate or whatever, and you didn't start with like a 1080 by 1080 canvas to share on Instagram? Like we are so trained now to make things with the intention of sharing them. And it's just like, why not just focus on the creation and like the act of creating because that's why you're creating in the first place. Um, so I'm just gonna wrap this up by encouraging you to get a hobby. And here are a few ways to do that. I also wanna say getting a hobby doesn't necessarily mean like something you're producing. It can be like 
reading, consuming things, listening, talking, all of those things. It doesn't have to be making. Um, but here's how I like to get in kind of that creative spirit. This is also just like a good way to like get the creative juices flowing anyway, even if you're just like stuck on a work problem. Look back on all the things that you loved as a kid. So like I said earlier, I find myself like looking for emo remixes that are kind of stupid, but I'm like, yeah, this works for spin class. Let's do it. Uh, I uh, recently watched a documentary about Nickelodeon called The Orange Years. Um, it's so good. I don't know who just made that noise, but it's so good. Um, <laughs> and, and I remembered like how influential that was on my childhood. Um, and that's just like unrelated to hobbies. That's been like a great source of inspiration for me in creation and like, oh, this feels right because this is something I've always loved as a kid. Um, I also, as a 4-H member, took cake decorating. I was like, Valerie, I see you. <laughs> um, and you know, I was actually like kind of okay about it at, or like at it. So a few weeks ago, I was like, I'm gonna try this again. Y'all, that cake, it, it tasted good, but it looked a mess. I was going to see a friend and I was like, I don't know them like this. I cannot take them this cake. So <laughs> it was not, it did not look good. But I, you know, I tried it, I explored it, it was fun. Whatever, inconsequential. Um, embrace like the weird, wacky parts of you and just talk about them to other people. I think I spent so much time, like I've gotta be corporate Jamie in this corporate world. And then when I would tell people in like away from the office what I was into or like things that I was working on, they would be shocked. Like they're like, wait, what are you doing? Like, why don't you talk about this more? So sharing those things will also encourage other people to share those like weird things and you might even find like a club of people that are into the weird thing that you're into. So speak it into existence. Um, get a new perspective. So two things. Christy made a cootie catcher. Here it is. To help you get a hobby. It is very abstract, I'll say. You've got to kind of squint your eyes and like, okay, we'll see. Uh, but it is a really fun cootie catcher uh, of like things to do. So the outside um, are action words. The inside are adjectives and then the um, inside are nouns. So uh, it's like you pick an action, you pick an adjective, and then you pick a, an implementation thing. So anyway, super fun. They're free over here. And they look like nachos because nachos are my favorite food. And then I also like to plug this uh, Kickstart Creativity. Uh, this is a local author. Uh, I wish I knew her because I love this, this thing. Um, it is, it's kind of like a tarot deck for creatives, but like, hear me out. Uh, it is uh, a perspective card, an intention card, and an action card. So I actually draw one of the, or I draw a set of these whenever I go to teach, just to kind of get out of the mold of, this is what a spin instructor should be, or this is what spin class should be, just to get a new perspective on that and to bring something different each time I show up. So I use this a lot, it sits on my desk, um, and it's compact. I actually saw it at the bookshop on Eastland, if you wanna go pick one up, they have it. And I am guilty of this, but instead of asking these questions, like I literally asked some, somebody, how's work today? And I was like, man, why did I do that? Instead of asking these questions about work, like ask more interesting questions because there are way more interesting things about you and about the people you talk to than what they do for a living. Also like the question, what do you do, is like a very loaded thing. Um, so try to move past that and start asking these questions to like learn more about people. My friend Kelsey recently posted a photo of a big group of like bugs that she had. <laughs> and I said, what are you doing? And she was like, oh, I preserve bugs. And I was like, what? <laughs> like, I've known her for a while and I have never known this about her because I've never asked. Like I, we just kind of surface talk and then I find out these cool things when I start to ask. So anyway, it made me like, I'm not into it, but like maybe I'm into it now. I don't know, we'll see. Uh, and then finally, just ask you guys. I uh, posed this question on Instagram. I said, what weird hobbies are you into? And a lot of you guys said, I don't think they're that weird. And I'm so glad you don't. I'm so glad, because I don't really either. Um, but somebody said impulsive seed collecting. Uh, and I said, oh, cool, what do you plant? And they're like, oh, I don't. And I was like, all right, cool. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> Somebody said uh, climbing trees in Centennial Park and then proceeded to send me a map of all the trees. Um, and then my friend makes um, uh, like little fingerboards, like you guys remember tech decks? 
uh, he makes those and he posts videos of them. And I'm just like, man, I did not know I needed this in my life, but I do, I do right now. So anyway, y'all y'all have some cool hobbies. Like just start asking each other about them. Um, so finally, now I want you guys to go get a hobby. Like go focus on the process of creating right now and find something other than work to like light you up. So anyway, thanks guys, this is fun. Oh. Uh, I have time for, time for questions? I don't know, I don't know what time it is. Um, my question is, if you could ride any animal into battle, what would it be? <laughs> okay, oh, okay. This is hard because, oh my gosh, okay. Well, first of all, I'm like six feet tall. I have a miniature schnauzer who is perfect. She's my Patronus. I would not want to like take her into battle, but also like if anybody was going to stand by me, it's her. It, the logistics would be very hard though. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, I think I, I feel good about that. The overwhelm of taking all the pandemic stuff yeah. all the new stuff you had to take on because you couldn't do all the old stuff yeah and now all the old stuff is back oh yeah yeah it's a it's a wonderful tower of things that i'm reluctant to let go of yeah uh, whether they make money or not it's an interesting problem yes yeah i feel like the pandemic has given me an opportunity to like did i really like that thing or did i just do it and it's like Oh, sorry, I can't COVID. Like, that's been my great excuse for everything. Like, mm, no, not feeling good about it, COVID. So <laughs> if that gives you any encouragement to say goodbye to some of those things. <laughs> you also don't need an excuse to say goodbye to things. <laughs> Yes, tell me. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Um, <laughs> this is really weird, and I am not, so I just want to like preface this was I'm not religious at all. I grew up Catholic, I'm a recovering Catholic, but I'm super into apocryphal theology, and I have been going to McKay's and finding all the books. Like, I have like this whole list of books about like the best people that have been like taking it and like taking out the doctrine of it and being like, yo, Paul, he, like, he was, and then like, Mary Magdalene I had a whole story run, and nobody talked about it, and I'm like deep in it, and now I'm on my Instagram, I'm an apocryphal theologian. <laughs> I can come and talk to y'all. No, I'm kidding. No, it is the most fun that I am having, and I'm like, oh, and now when I talk to somebody who's, I mean, no, no offense, but who's crazy, and is like, this is the way, I'm like, but let me tell you what this story <laughs> about this chick named Thecla. And people are like, who are you? And they're praying for me, and I love it. <laughs> okay, thank you, thank you. It's so fun to like get into something too, and then it's like, man, I'm so into this. And then sometimes you wake up and you're like, mm, not really into that anymore. But like, remember that, remember that. Like I look back on the inflatable chair face for me was like like that might be a very influential thing for you in 10 years and you're like wow what a time what a time it was to be alive in 2022. <laughs> All right, we got maybe one more question or hobby share and then we have a couple things to say and then we got to get you get you guys back to work yeah. we'll get astrid too we'll do uh my question is so like you know you're trying out a new hobby and let's say it's just like not hitting and you're like, wow, I've got like $400 worth of like candle making equipment. Not personal experience, not personal experience. And, and my house is full of candles and wicks and stuff. Um, like what, what do you think is like a good way of expressing that like this isn't hitting? Like how do I let this go? Like what, what do you think is a good indicator of like that maybe this isn't it, but I'm glad I tried it. Yeah. Uh, I'm like, yeah, I'm in to polymer clay. <laughs> like I, that's my life now. Um, and I feel like I personally, I have a lot of, um, I'm very detached. <laughs> I'm like, mm, I can just let this go. Like, I, I feel like I've been, I've, I've been, uh, I was kind of raised to do that, like just to not be so hung up on one thing. But I will say, I've also, I just like to encourage people too, to like be comfortable with being bad at something and like go into something like spin instructing, for example, was I was like, oh, I'm in this class with people who have done this for years. And I'm just like, oh, I am bad 
at this. And it's like just kind of embracing that and working through it further to figure out, is it actually like, is this actually not for you? And then saying, OK, this isn't for me. Like, maybe it will be, though, in a year, putting it aside, revisiting it, and all about that. Um, or just like, oh, if, like, I'm not going to be good at something right away. So like, let me just work on this. Like, let me try to make 10 candles. And if in 10 candles I am still like mm, not for me, then set it aside again. So I think just working through it and deciding if, if, if you're, yeah. You yeah, I hope that bad. helps. Yes, yeah, give it the college try. Yeah, yeah. don't quit too early. Subject of candle making, for those of you who do have houses full of supplies, there's a couple of places you can donate art supplies that like you might need to let go of, which is perfectly okay. I'm never going to oil pastel again, and that's fine. So we have things like turnip trucks, recycling center, there's uh, smart supplies over by Opryland. Do you know of any other? I was going to say turnip, turnip. Green. Turn of green, yeah, sorry. Turn of green. Yeah, turn of green. Yeah. But yeah, so it's a, yeah. don't feel bad about yeah. the things you tried because then somebody yeah. else gets to try them or be passionate about yeah. them for very cheap. And I want to encourage everyone to yeah. do that and like, not feel guilty it, about it. Sometimes it sucks to like put money into something yeah. and like acquire a bunch of stuff, but it does feel good to like somebody else is going to really invest in this like and be, it's going to be their thing and like it might be their hobby or it might project them into like a whole other business. So I just like to, you know. Does it bring you joy? Hug it, say goodbye. <laughs> Hello. On Hello. this subject, uh, I saw a meme one time or like just something on Instagram that yeah. was like, ADHD people, we need to have a way to trade hobbies. And I think that hobby swaps, like a clothing swap, should be a thing mm. where everybody just brings all the stuff yes. that they have that they're never going to yes. use again. And everybody can just oh. pick up something new. OK, I'm in Yeah. that. Um, I, Future Creative Mornings programming, yes, guys. Yes. We're going to talk yes. later. This is an idea. Yeah. I, I wanted to find a way to bring this into the presentation. I couldn't. But one thing I used to do with some friends was I was like, I'm really interested in what you're doing, like what you're making. Can you teach me how to make it? And then we would just kind of like get together and like people came over to my house and we made pies or uh, somebody taught us how to like loom knit. And it was just like, if you're around, come hang out. We have all this stuff. Like we have an surplus of yeah, items to loom knit. That's also a great way yeah. to so it just like, them. yes. And it's like, oh, you love this? Take it, take it. <laughs> so yes, I'm here for that. Yeah, we've done summer camp days and we're trying to have like a summer camp party this summer where it's yes. like, hey, like what thing can you teach everyone yes. in the yard? Yeah. And then we'll have grilled cheeses, you know, oh, as it. one does. I, I'll, I'll attend. Yeah, all right. You had one last question and then we're going to wrap up. I actually have this fun new hobby. I've yes. got like, I bought like five, like just general Jenga sets. <gasps> and all the theme Jenga sets you get are a little boring because they just choose like three colors that yeah. are kind of match it. Yeah. But I want, I'm doing like everyone where each piece is individual. So, and, I and at that point, it kind of like is a mental game because like, I want to look at this cool one. So I'm going to pull this from the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Oh my god. It's just my strategy to win every Jenga game. Yes, yes. Oh, no, I love it. I love it. Keep pursuing that. Like, it's also just a great way to like, hey guys, look at this cool thing I made. You can pull them out. Like, it's a great way to share something that you've made with other people. And again, like, it's inconsequential though. Like, you're not like, come buy my Jenga set. You're like, come play the Jenga with me. Yeah. <laughs> love it. Love that for you. <laughs> so yeah, we saw Jamie. We did.